When you're committed to the word of God, he will always make a way for you to share his word, to preserve his word. And we have to always remember that God is the God of everything and everyone. He controls us. He controls our enemies. He controls the environment. He controls kings, queens, presidents, governors, mayors. So when we know that, we won't be afraid to step out because God has the power to move on those people and influence them to help you to advance his kingdom even if they don't believe as we try to advance the kingdom we have to understand and realize that god has people everywhere waiting to help us and supply us with everything that we need but we need to make sure that our focus is on the word of god and remain diligent in our efforts to spread the word as always i'm so glad to be here for the sanctuary sunday school now known as the Sunday School Renaissance, and I'm so excited to be back, and I'm jumping right in. I'm, I'm actually back, I think, maybe 95%, so I'm ready to go. I know that I released the Sunday School Renaissance Journal Planner, and I was not able to keep that up. So what I'm gonna do is infuse it into every lesson because there's a lot of people teaching the Sunday School lesson now, and I'm not gonna just sit here and go, verse by verse with you. So what I'm going to do is really focus on the life application side of these scriptures, because when I say to you, I live by these scriptures, I study this and I do this stuff every single day. And God has really blessed me. He keeps kept me. I think that's the only reason, the only way I've been able to continue to live through everything that has been going on in my life and in the world in general. So this week we're talking about Ezra and the law. Now, Ezra was in Babylon. As we know, King Nebuchadnezzar took them into Babylonian captivity. That's how they got there. But the Persian Empire overthrew the Babylonian Empire, which is now why we have King Artaxerxes here with Ezra. And I love the way that this story pans out because at the beginning of the exile in Babylon, you had Nebuchadnezzar and you had Daniel and the three Hebrew boys and their faith was so strong until they found favor with that king and he allowed them to worship. Now that was at the beginning of the exile. Now we're moving towards the end of the exile and we have Ezra, we have Nehemiah and his contemporaries and the same thing, the Persian king now found favor with Ezra. And in, in our lesson, it starts out with Ezra's lineage and it shows you who he is. And the reason for that is to show that he was a direct descendant of Aaron and he was the chief Levite. He was the chief priest. So as we know that now we know that Ezra is of the Levite tribe. <clears throat> so he had a responsibility to be a scribe. The duties of the scribes it's to preserve history, to um, record history, and make sure that the law stayed intact. So the law and the history goes hand in hand. So Ezra was really committed to the law of Moses, which it was called the law of Moses, but it was actually the law of God as it was given to Moses to lead and to govern the people. So. At this point, they had started going back to Jerusalem. They were about to build the city and he went back to Jerusalem and he was studying the law and um, he was really adamant, right, about making sure that he preserved those statutes because Ezra was concerned, and this is such a timely lesson, Ezra was concerned that when they went back to Jerusalem, he didn't want them to lose anything because think about it. The whole reason why they ended up in Babylon to begin with is because they had sinned in the sight of God. So God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to punish them. So Ezra in Ezra's mind, it's like, okay, we're going to go back. But when we go back, it's extremely important that we adhere to the laws of God, right? And I say it so timely because everybody is talking about, I want to get back to church and get back to having church, good old church like I used to have. And it concerns me a bit 
that we're thinking in terms of getting back to normal and getting back to the way that we used to do things because I'm not so, so sure that God was exactly pleased with the way that we were doing things and just maybe we need to go back get in this word understand what it is that God is requiring of us and this time when we are allowed as we are going back to the sanctuaries and as we are worshiping let's not make our focus getting back to the way we used to do things let's make our focus making sure that we're doing things as God has instructed us to do so in his word and so that's what Ezra was trying to do and I love this passage because when you speak of King Artaxerxes, same thing I said about Nebuchadnezzar, these at, the, at their points, at their respective points in time, were the most powerful men in the world. The Persian Empire was the world empire at that time. And this king, Artaxerxes, what he said was law. Whatever he decreed was what was going to happen. And so we see here that this king gave him not only permission to go back, but he told him you can have whatever you want and you can worship your God and nobody better challenge you or come against you or stop you. And he said, and go get all the gold and the silver that you can get out of your free will offerings, all of these verses in here. And then he told them, he says that you can go and you can take it. And he says, I want you to do this. Um, by the God, by your God, the God of heavens and go back and worship your God. And this is amazing because this was a pagan nation and these pagan nations, these kings, they deemed themselves to be gods. But Artaxerxes understood the power of the living God and he blessed Ezra or I should say God blessed Ezra through this pagan king. And he said, Whoever doesn't do the law that God, verse 26, and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or imprisonment. So he put all of his weight behind Ezra. And this was, again, a timely and encouraging lesson. As we prepare to try to go back, you know, the church has been under siege. And yes, we live in an evil world. It's, it's just all kind of foolishness happening right now. But let's parallel again to the children of Israel, because all of the, the trials, the turmoil that they went through in Babylon, they brought it on themselves because they were displeasing God. OK, let's bring that to modern day. Could it be that some of the persecution and the difficulty that the church is facing, we brought on ourselves because possibly our agendas and our programs did not please God. So as we are going back into the sanctuary and rebuilding, I'm rebuilding the sanctuary Sunday school, the Sunday school Renaissance, because I was sick I, and I lost a lot of momentum. And so as I'm rebuilding this, I'm taking all of this into consideration. Okay, God, what do I do differently? What mistakes did I make? How do I fix this? How do I really reach the people that you told me to reach? How do I impact the lives of people that you want me to impact? And so when we shift our focus there, that's when God will begin to give the increase. Now, I am going to go to the Sunday School Renaissance Planner because those of you who purchased the planner, I did not go through all of the steps that I went through and I am releasing in March 1st, uh, a three month version, a quarterly version, and I'm going to leave it undated and go through this. And those of you who purchased the original one, I will send you a free copy of the new three month version because I do really want to do this. Even though I wasn't going over these in videos, I was living by them. So when we talk about this lesson, OK, the first thing that it tells you to do is to compare and contrast yourself to the main character of the lesson, right? The main character in this lesson is Ezra. For me, that would definitely be a comparison because it's funny. Um, my dad calls me his scribe because I, I wrote a book about 
um, his sermons and I compiled that book and when I released it and he read it he said that I was his scribe so I would say as Ezra I do as Ezra same as Ezra I consider myself to be somewhat of a scribe where I am very much committed to preserving the word of God to sharing the word of God to executing the word of God so that would be a comparison for me and then it says to identify a situation right that aligns with this lesson and I think I already covered that I talked about the process of rebuilding the Sunday School Renaissance and if you have not subscribed I need you to do so I think over the course of when I wasn't recording I lost some subscribers so I need to get that subscription base back up but I can identify that's a situation where I'm rebuilding, right? And in order to rebuild, just like Ezra, I'm digging deep into the word of the Lord to really identify what it is that God is requiring of me. So in this journal, what you're going to do, you're going to find a situation that you can apply this lesson to in your life. And look, definitely do this because there is one. And then also, what steps are you going to take to actually apply this lesson? How are you going to do this? And if you don't have this journal, you can always order one, but you can also put it in the comments because I really have been saying this for months. I want this to be interactive. I don't want you to just watch my videos and listen to me. I want them to inspire you to do something. I want them to bring you closer to God. I want them to lighten your load and make your walk with your Christian walk just a little bit easier. And the next part of it is every single day, I want you to look for a way or something that relates to this lesson and jot it down. And then finally, make a to-do list of things that you're going to actively do. And this is something that I've done for years to apply these Sunday school lessons. And it has not only blessed me, you know, we talk about living saved. Living saved is bigger than church. I live saved every day, everywhere I go. I apply godly principles to every aspect of my life. It has helped me financially. It's helped me spiritually, emotionally, um, my relationships, all of it. And that that's why I teach Sunday school, because I want people to understand that, yes, the Bible is the greatest story that's ever told. It's been hailed as that. And that is the truth. But it's more than um, it's more than an anthology of stories about Jesus and Peter and Paul and Ezra and three Hebrew boys. It's more than that. This is a living word that is designed to govern your life, to be applied daily so that we can live the best quality of life that's possible because that is what God has desired for us, that abundant lifestyle. And that is my goal.